Okay, welcome to the second session of the Cloud Native for Java uh, Day, uh, the J Jakarta One live stream. I'm here with uh, Will Lyons from Oracle, and he's uh, going to give us a keynote on driving Jakarta E to success. So, the word uh, is your one, Will. Okay. Thank you very much, Ivar. Uh, my name again is Will Lyons. Um, I work for Oracle in the Oracle Enterprise Cloud Native Java Group. Uh, and I am also a member of the Jakarta EE Steering Committee. And I'm presenting today on driving Jakarta EE success. So um, for many of us, these have been uh, challenging times. Uh, you know, I, th I think the uh, pandemic is affecting all of us in various ways, uh, either through ourselves or family, friends, or our professional lives. I, I hope you all are safe and well. And uh, I thank you for taking your time today with this event. Um, what I'm going to be covering is just a brief recap on Jakarta EE8. Um, we've actually been quite successful with this release. I'll cover a little bit about Jakarta E generally and its relevance to cloud native computing. Um, I'll talk about uh, community participation. Whoops, excuse me. And uh, the results uh, we've been able to achieve there. And I'll I'll also give an update on Jakarta E9. Jakarta E9 is the next Jakarta E release, um, and we're making good progress on it, and we'll give you the status of where that project is. And finally, how you can help and help drive the success of Jakarta E uh, in the community, uh, within your companies, uh, and for your applications. Let's start with Jakarta E8. So Jakarta E8 was released in uh, September 2019. So gee, that's uh, about eight months ago, nine months ago. Um, it, it's a result of an effort, as you know, a uh, combined effort of different members of the Jakarta E working group and the Jakarta E community. And the primary goal of Jakarta E9, excuse me, Jakarta E8 was to deliver a first release of the platform that was fully compatible with Java EE8, but was based on the open specification process, uh, the open source TCK delivered uh, through the Jakarta EE spec process. Um, and it included the delivery, concurrent delivery of compatible implementations. Um, and uh, so that was delivered in uh, 2019. Uh, so most of the Java EE vendors have now delivered uh, implementations which pass the Jakarta EE compatibility tests. Um, so we've actually been quite su successful at encouraging vendor support. So here is a current listing of all the vendors who and the implementations that have passed the Jakarta EE 8 technology compatibility kit. So uh, between Open Liberty, Pyara Server, Wildfly, Oracle WebLogic Server, and of course, Eclipse Glassfish Server, um, and Apusic Application Server, Primeton App Server, the JBoss Enterprise Application Platform, and Tmax Juice, uh, we have uh, nine implementations which are passing the full platform TCK in four implementations passing the web profile. So we've actually uh, achieved a great deal of success in um, encouraging vendors to deliver compatible implementations. And I, uh, one of the reasons for this is not only the compatibility with Java E8, so we could leverage that, but we have an open source TCK, so it's real easy to get started in using the TCK and getting your implementation into a state where it's passing. So we feel really good about that. Um, we also feel good about uh, Jakarta's relevance to cloud native computing. Um, certainly uh, within Oracle, and uh, I'm sure among the other, among yourselves, and among, among the other vendors who are participating in the working group, 
uh, we are seeing uh, a significant shift in usage by our customers uh, and interest in running microservices, running applications and containers, uh, most typically uh, orchestrating containers through use of technologies like Kubernetes. Uh, and we're certainly seeing that in terms of demand for running Jakarta E applications in Kubernetes. Uh, one of the uh, standard components that's used for managing uh, applications in Kubernetes is called a Kubernetes operator. A Kubernetes operator is a, a component that is used to extend Kubernetes APIs and manage specific types of applications running in Kubernetes. And you can see uh, here that uh, and this is just a sampling, this is not a comprehensive representation, but both Open Liberty, Wildfly, WebLogic uh, have implemented Kubernetes operators to support the usage of these technologies running in Kubernetes and containers. Pyara has delivered a capability called Docker nodes for uh, implementing native support for Docker containers when running Pyara server. So we have proven technologies for helping uh, Jakarta E implementations to run in uh, Kubernetes. And we also have public cloud services which are built around Jakarta EE. Uh, if you look on Amazon Web Services, IBM Cloud, Azure for Microsoft and Oracle Cloud, you can see that all of these vendors and others deliver support for Jakarta EE. Uh, the simplify the provisioning of Jakarta E configurations and generally support enablement of Jakarta E applications running in their cloud. So we have a platform which is built for and supports cloud native infrastructures and which is actively supported by some of the major public cloud offerings in the industry. We also are leveraging Jakarta EE in other cloud native implementations and with other cloud native technologies, for example, MicroProfile. And you'll be hearing several presentations on MicroProfile today. Uh, Eclipse MicroProfile leverages the Jakarta EE specifications. So, uh, MicroProfile implementations level JAXRS, CDI, JSONP, and JSONB. And uh, as an example, I've listed uh, Halidon MP, which is an open source implementation you'll be hearing about today, which both leverages those standards uh, because it is a micro profile compatible implementation. And we're delivering new implementations uh, that leverage not only these standards, but leverage the component implementations which are provided in Eclipse Glassfish and which are delivered in the EE4J projects and repositories hosted at the Eclipse Foundation. And we not only leverage the technologies I just mentioned, but also provide support for Java persistence, the Java transaction API, and excuse me, Jakarta <laughs> persistence and Jakarta transactions and uh, Jakarta WebSocket. So we have uh, examples of other cloud native technologies which are leveraging the Jakarta EE APIs. Forgive me for my occasional lapse into a Java EE terminology. It's, a, it's an old sin. Um, we've also done a great job at encouraging community participation. So. Uh, during 2020 so far, this is just a sampling of the things we have done to uh, drive participation in the community. Uh, we conducted a live stream event like this one in Japan with over 200 attendees. Uh, prior to the lockdown on physical conferences, which unfortunately uh, began uh, occurring during March, we uh, participated in four physical conferences. Uh, we we're actually going to be um, have a major presence uh, at KubeCon, which uh, has had to be postponed, unfortunately. But we were actively uh, participating in physical conferences. We've done uh, online tech talks. This is an ongoing series of talks given by community members that are relative or relevant for uh, Jakarta 
EE technologies. We've done uh, presentations on Jakarta EE itself, uh, the Jakarta EE update series. Uh, we have a very active series of blogs that are being delivered. Uh, Ivar is uh, a very active member of the blogging community. Uh, and we've also uh, launched a new uh, YouTube channel, uh, Studio Jakarta EE. Um, I believe all of these presentations are going to be made available with the links so that you can go and visit all these sites, participate in Tech Talks, update series, um, and uh, in the YouTube channel. We have also uh, just completed uh, the 2020 version of the Jakarta EE Developer Survey. Um, we're analyzing the results and we'll report on them soon, but we had a very positive response with uh, 2,000, over 2,000 respondents. So we're very happy about that. We've uh, also, we've delivered an initiative for those of you who are members of Java user groups around the world. Uh, we've uh, stood up a Crowdcast account uh, like this one, which we have made available for Java groups Java user groups to use to host their virtual meetings uh, while physical uh, meetings are being put on hold. We've also uh, created a program for Java user groups to adopt a spec uh, to encourage particular jugs to pick a Jakarta E spec and uh, participate in the requirements or development or testing of that specification. We've also taken steps to simplify the ability for individuals to participate in the Jakarta E working group. Um, so for those of you who um, may, be, may have an interest in Jakarta EE, um, but your parent company that you're working for is not a member of the Eclipse Foundation, we've developed a way for you to, be coming, to become a participating member as an individual in the working group to simplify involvement of community members like yourselves. And we have a ton of resources available to you online in a community folder that you can use to familiarize yourself with Jakarta EE, to encourage adoption of Jakarta EE, to recruit other members. And I've used many of the slides myself that are in this community folder in preparing this presentation. Um, and we've seen results from uh, many of these activities. And this is just a sampling of some of the results we've seen. We're tracking on an ongoing basis, among other things, uh, the size of the mailing lists for all the various uh, Jakarta EE projects, so the projects that are associated with the actual delivery of Jakarta EE component technologies and the overall Jakarta EE platform. And we're, we're, I'm showing here a listing uh, of the subscribers to each of these individual mailing lists at the end of December and at the end of March. And you can see that in all cases, the project mailing lists are growing. And, and if you all of them, uh, we've got over 2,000 uh, participants in these mailing lists, and we've seen a 16% growth in these mailing lists during Q1. And we hope to continue that over time, and we're very pleased by that. We're also seeing growing participation in Jakarta E projects throughout the community and across the community. So what this pie chart shows is contributions from uh, Jakarta E working group members uh, to um, Jakarta E projects during 2019. And during 2019, that was the time frame when most of our efforts were focused on Jakarta EE8 delivery, and many of the contributions naturally were driven by Oracle in terms of specifications, in terms of contributions of Glassfish technology, in terms of contributions of the TCKs. Um, so we saw <clears throat> a majority of contributions for Oracle, but also a healthy contribution rate from other members and other vendors who are participating in Jakarta EE. We're seeing a lot of forward progress in 2020 towards a more even distribution and a more even participation from Jakarta EE 
members across the community. So whereas Oracle was contributing over 50% of contributions uh, during 2019, if you look at commits to Jakarta East spec projects in Q1, you see a much more even distribution across the vendor members of the Jakarta E working group and a much larger contribution from other community participants. So I would say this is representative of a great deal of success in engaging the broader community in participating in the development and delivery of Jakarta EE and Jakarta EE improvements. So what's coming next? Um, from the technology delivery side, the next thing we're focusing on is Jakarta EE9. So the Jakarta, Jakarta EE9 is the next release of the Jakarta EE platform. So it will be a full release of the platform and the component APIs. The intent is to deliver functional and architectural equivalents to Jakarta EE8 and Jakarta EE8 functionality. However, there is a significant change in that we are transforming the use of the Java X namespace and all the use of Java X package names to the Jakarta namespace. So all the packages that use the Java X namespace in Jakarta E8 will be transformed to use the Jakarta uh, package naming convention in Jakarta E9. We're taking a consistent approach to this across all specifications with the goal of enabling the modifications of applications and the tooling used in conjunction with applications to use Jakarta E9 and the, and the new Jakarta E9 APIs that use the Jakarta namespace. We've actually got an open source project within the Eclipse Foundation called the Eclipse Transformer Project, which is being built, which can take an existing Jakarta E8 application and transform its use of packages to Jakarta E9. We're seeing some good success with that, and we hope that that uh, project continues to evolve. When we deliver Jakarta E9, we will have a platform uh, which will support implementations using the new namespace, and that can be evolved uh, freely in open source in future Jakarta E releases to deliver new functionality and new capabilities to Jakarta E users. Um, so we have a project underway uh, to deliver Jakarta E9. Um, I forget the precise kickoff date, but it was in the late uh, December or early January timeframe. Uh, an overview of the project is provided at this URL. The goal is to move to the Jakarta namespace, as I described. There are no new specifications, uh, with the exception of certain specifications that were formerly delivered in Java SE and were removed from Java SE, so have to be delivered outside uh, Java SE to run on Java SE 11. We're removing a small number of uh, deprecated specifications that were very infrequently used. There are minor enhancements to a small number of specs, but generally uh, full compatibility. Uh, we will be supporting Java SE 11, so uh, there will be the option to run on Java SE 8, but uh, you know, uh, implementations must support Java SE 11. And we've got over 30 specifications, TCKs, to deliver along with appropriate compatible implementations for the various components and for the full platform itself. So it's a very significant project, but we're making good progress. So we've got API release candidates available for all the specifications. We've got milestone implementations for all the components. I have it on good authority from the project leads that were actually there at this point. Um, we've got a growing number of component TCKs, so TCKs that can actually be used to verify the compatibility of the component implementations that are being delivered. And we actually have new builds actually completing for the next version of Eclipse Glassfish, which for a variety of technical re uh, reasons, happens to be a technical prerequisite for the for this release, in addition to being 
a compatible implementation of Jakarta E9. So we've got Eclipse Glassfish 6.0, the next release of Eclipse Glassfish building. Uh, and we have the core or the nucleus of Eclipse Glassfish booting, uh, which includes you know, the, the core kernel components of Glassfish to actually make the server run. So we're working on getting the full web profile and full platform capabilities running on Glassfish. Our hope is that we're going to be delivering a milestone release of Jakarta E9. We won't have full implementations passing all TCKs, but we hope to have uh, implementations that are working and can be released for evaluation, for uh, usage by tooling vendors and by the community to begin experimenting with EE9 and preparing for a GA release um, in the early fall timeframe. So roughly uh, September-ish timeframe. So how can you help? Um, we're always looking for assistance with the community to uh, promote uh, Jakarta technologies and the Jakarta brand in the community, to help with technical work, uh, to help develop collateral to support the overall initiative uh, and to you know test things out to report bugs to help deliver the platform and improve the technologies we're delivering um, you'll be getting copies of this presentation please use use these links to sign up for the mailing list sign up for events um, participate in the projects in github uh, participate in our slack channels uh, post blogs, uh, review the blogs, learn more about the technologies, and uh, participate in tech talks uh, and in some of our meetups. And you can get directly involved with Jakarta E specification projects. So if you become, if you sign the Eclipse contributor agreement, you can become a contributor to um, Jakarta E and Eclipse projects generally. Um, there's a process by which contributors over time, uh, as they develop experience, can become committers uh, to specific projects. And once you are voted to be a committer, uh, the Eclipse Foundation and the team at the Eclipse Foundation supporting Jakarta E will help you uh, through the process to enable you to actually participate as a full committer in Jakarta E specification projects. So, um, we're real happy with the progress we've made at both uh, seeing successful Jakarta E8 implementations, uh, encouraging participation in Jakarta E throughout the community, uh, the delivery process that's underway for the Jakarta E9 platform. And uh, we're appreciative of you joining this presentation and hope that you sign up for other events and for participation in other initiatives going forward. So I've got uh, five, six minutes left. Uh, are there questions? Uh, yeah, thank you for your presentation, Will. It was excellent. Uh, and I really enjoyed it. And uh, we have three yeah. questions for you here. Yeah, OK. Uh, the first one is, uh, what is the state of Oracle ADF? That's what the, is the uh, sort of Oracle development ADF? framework? Um, Oracle yeah. ADF, it's not, it's yeah, well, not part of the card be... EE. Yeah, what was the question? Sorry, are you there? So, so, uh, is there any plans to port it or, or make it available for Jakarta EE? Yes. So um, as you may have noticed on um, one of the slides, we've delivered Oracle WebLogic Server 14.1, which uh, is passing all of the Jakarta EE eight compatibility tests. And the intent is that there will be a delivery of Oracle Fusion middleware on top of that, which will uh, be, you know, so which will include ADF and be built on top of Jakarta E8. So the answer is yes, that is planned. Okay, cool. Um, are you still there, Ivar? Yes, I'm here. So uh, there is uh, another question and you probably expected this. Uh, that is why the Java X namespace transformation. 
So Java X, as uh, many of you probably know, is a package name and a uh, namespace and a naming convention that is used by Java SE. And as uh, many of you know, um, that's a uh, very important technology for Oracle, very important for the community itself. And Oracle takes an active interest in protecting the intellectual property associated with Java uh, and the compatibility of Java SE implementations. Uh, we worked very hard with the Eclipse Foundation to find a way uh, where an independent effort at the Eclipse Foundation could continue to use uh, the Java X namespace um, while retaining what we felt were appropriate protections of uh, Java SE IP and Java SE compatibility. And we were unable to come to an agreement uh, between the two organizations. I am not in a position to go into greater detail than that, but I would say both organizations made a good faith effort to achieve this. We were unable to. Uh, we came to a compromise solution, which is to use uh, this new namespace, which uses the same naming conventions, but, ju but you just uses a different prefix. I would have preferred we had come to an alternative conclusion. That is the best conclusion we could come to. Yeah. And and the last question yeah. is, are there any demo projects which run on the latest Eclipse Glassfish servers? And uh, I could probably help you with that. OK, go for it. <laughs> or Oracle. This, this yeah. Eclipse Glassfish is actually an open source project owned at the Eclipse Foundation. Go ahead. Yes, and, and there are uh, tutorials and examples that run on Glassfish. And they run on any Jakarta EE compatible server. Uh, whether they run on the latest version or not, that is kind of up to the community to participate. So I, I encourage you to join these projects and help get these samples up and running. We have the the first cup of, of uh, Jakarta EE and, and the Jakarta EE tutorial. Uh, so, so it, and all the samples that go with it. So it's just to to um, uh, go in and help those projects update it. And, and we actually just uh, launched the webpage start.jakarta.ee. So, so that's where you can go in and get the link to all these uh, projects just uh i see um just to clarify for alexander adf is not supported today on 1411 um, but we plan to support it in the future i uh, just want to be factually precise in my answers to your questions okay uh, it looks like we're at the end of our time hey thank you all very much thank you ivar and uh enjoy the remainder of the event uh, we've got great participation and are real pleased by that yeah, uh, thank you very much for uh, giving this talk and uh, for all the participants, uh, just hang out, hang around and uh, you will be uh, brought into the next session by Sebastian that starts in uh, a minute or so. So thank you very much for listening. Bye bye. So are you 